a date which will live in infamy. Yeah, but just holding it uh, just enough to keep it. It bursts into flames. August 24th, 1940. This is Trafalgar Square. I'll just let you listen to the traffic and the sound of the siren for a moment. Just a few people here walking rather hurriedly toward the air raid shelters. You're right, this thing is smooth and you can see it's cylindrical. Just a minute, shape. something's happening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is terrific. This end of the thing is beginning to flake off. The top is beginning to rotate like a screw and this thing must be hollow. He's moving! Keep those men back! Keep those idiots back! Keep those idiots back! Come on, get back! He's off! time of depression, Armstrong had essentially created an industry worth two billion dollars. However, the AM radio was a big business in pre-television days, and some people wanted to keep it that way in order to ensure their profits stayed the same. Founder of RCA, David Sarnoff, controlled all the technical aspects of radio. Sarnoff wanted nothing more than to stop FM radio dead in its tracks. Exhausted and out of hope, Armstrong exploded with rage. On February 1st, 1954, Edwin Howard Armstrong put his coat and hat on wrapped a scarf around his neck, and walked out the window of his apartment on the 13th floor. Radio started to have an FM band included with the AM band in the late 1950s and 1960s. By the 1970s, FM audience size surpassed that of AM. Hello, Hello. We're, we're glad, glad you, you made, made it. it. Welcome, Welcome to, to the future. Coming to you from high top the Triangle Tower. He's on back. Take your clothes off and have some wine! <laughs> it was the greatest station I'd ever heard. Radio was changing, the political climate was changing. WNEW-FM was born in the fire of the 60s. The station came along at a time in our history when young people were beginning to have an unprecedented impact on American culture and society. FM radio became their main medium of expression. One by the morning, she puts on a New York station. You know, she don't believe what she heard at all. She started shaking to that fine, fine music. You know, her life was saved by rock and roll. Well, Benny King. Oh, and yeah. a million seller of the next cut on side one. Yes, yeah, Stand By Me was uh, one of my big ballads. I used to score a lot of groupies with that song. It was <laughs> rather, rather my favorite. So. It's Let's time for you to stop blowing air up your chicken. <laughs> You've been listening to the Testy Tuesday edition of the Buzzard Morning Zoo. Coming to you live and direct from the new state-of-the-art studios of WMMS. High atop the Statler office tower in beautiful but dismally cloudy and wet downtown Cleveland. Mother on Q Sky FM Los Angeles. For those of you who never knew, for those of you who've never forgotten, for those of you who really don't give it. I believe it goes a long way toward validating the amyloid hypothesis. And it could lead to the first drug that would treat the underlying cause of Alzheimer's rather than just the symptoms. John Hamilton, NPR News.